Hello, everyone, and welcome to a podcast brought to you by Flow. I'm your host for today, Gabrielle, and I am honored to be joined today by Edmund LeDuc, who's Interaction Designer and Alexander Forrest Network Deployment Program Director at Flow. And they're both experts in their field and just the perfect resource for those of us that find ourselves asking the question, you know, will EV charging stations ever be quite as good as gas stations? And here today to answer that and give us just a little bit more outlook into EV charging developments and how they differ from your traditional pump are Edmund and Alexander. So welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Nice to meet you. Of course. Could you please, uh, both of you gentlemen, just give us your name, your title, and just what it is you do within your industry to just give our audience a little bit of perspective. Sure. Um, I'll start first. Uh, so Edmund LeDuc, I work as an interaction designer here at Flow. I've been here for about uh, two years. And for those who don't know what an interaction designer does, because it's typically a little um, uh, blurry for some. Um, so essentially, uh, as an interaction designer, my role is to uh, speak to EV drivers and understand basically what their needs are, um, understand what their pain points are using our services, our stations, the apps, our websites, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and obviously our products, right? So our charging stations and understand what's missing within that experience and work towards making that uh, easier and better for them over time, so. Fantastic, and Alex? Hi there, I'm Alex Forrest. I'm the Network Deployment Program Director here at Flow. I started with Flow uh, in March of this year, so not quite a year yet in the company. Uh, but I bring uh, a long career of infrastructure deployment experience to now the EV charging industry with the goal of finding great locations to deploy flow chargers that will increase the availability of charging and therefore hopefully EV adoption, along with uh, making sure our customers get the best possible experience uh, using the flow product. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for sharing a little bit of your bios and your background. Uh, you know, to start off, you know, when we're talking about EV charging, uh, non-EV drivers always come back to the gas station experience because uh, this is just natural. It's what we know. Uh, but the truth is charging an EV is actually just a completely different experience and mindset because, um, I mean, refueling a car is what we're used to. Uh, it's a little bit different or a at least most of the time it is. So, you know, doing these podcasts and talking with members of uh, various members of the flow team, I'm starting to wonder if we should ever uh, just start comparing both the experiences. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's really important to start by by thinking about some of the major differences between the ways that, that EVs will be recharged versus how we refuel our internal combustion cars today. Um, as it has developed, the electric vehicle has basically three types of chargers that currently exist. There's so-called level one charging, which is the most kind of basic and is built into every electric vehicle, which basically requires you to find a good old fashioned outlet to plug into with an extension cord. And that allows you to charge your vehicle. Uh, the downside though, is that it takes a, a good amount of time. Uh, you're talking two to three days, in fact, to, to fully recharge uh, a typical EV. Um, the next level uh, that helps speed up the process, so-called level two, now involves us having a, a box placed somewhere, whether it be at your house or in out in the world and for public use, that increases the amount of power available and therefore increases, or sorry, decreases the, uh, the time it takes to do that recharge. And so now we're talking on the scale of hours, maybe six to eight hours, let's say, to, to recharge a, a typical EV. And finally, we get to the so-called level three or DC fast or direct current fast charging stations that are the kind of the top of the heap when it comes to the power available. And here we're, we're talking about a recharge that could be done on the scale of 30 to 40 minutes. So it, it, there's a group of different types of charging for, for different needs and, and different applications. And so really the challenge for us is to deploy all of these chargers in the right ways in the right places to meet the the needs of our EV driving public. Yeah, well, I mean, Alex touches on a good point. Um, there's obviously different types of charger for different scenarios. And I think the, the important is knowing when to use which one. Um, and I think that when people look at EVs or EV charging stations from an outside perspective as maybe someone who's never had an EV or who's new to it, 
Um, the main thing that people notice is the public charging stations, which are either, as Alex mentioned, the DC fast stations or public level two stations. But what we often tend to forget in our first, let's say, analysis of how uh, people fuel an EV versus an internal combustion engine is that, um, you know, instead of having to always go out to fuel your vehicle, 80 to 90 percent of what we're uh, doing to charge an electric vehicle is done at home overnight without any hassle, without any getting out of the, the home. Uh, I, I often compare it to sometimes, you know, just you plug your phone in at night, you wake up the next morning, it has a full charge. So an electric vehicle in 80% of, of, uh, of the situations is comparable to that, actually. Um, so the, the, the DC fast sessions or even level two sessions are only occasional things that people have to do if they do a much longer road trip or if they're going much further away or if they just decide, hey, I'm at the mall and I feel like topping up. I'll just plug in my car, tap my payment, and you know I'll be I'll be adding some uh, some distance to my car while I'm doing other errands. So it kind of does the work for you in the background. We, you know, I kind of want to dig into that a little bit because actually I just had a family member who just bought an EV uh, vehicle, and in, in within the vehicle, you know, it shows you uh, the map. Uh, it's supposed to be real easy, right, to find. Um, appropriate charging station. And, you know, for these longer, uh, maybe road trips that you're taking, sometimes that could be a little bit difficult. So, you know, Alexander, as someone who works on network deployment, could you please maybe enlighten us about uh, some of that in terms of, will we ever bridge that gap? Can we hope that someday it'll basically be just as easy to find a charger as it is to find a pump? Yeah, the goal, of course, is to continue to increase the available infrastructure that, that's out in the world. Uh, that's a big part of our mandate and, and a big part of our goal. And some of the things to keep in mind is the, the sort of influence of, of governments as they continue to really invest and subsidize the deployment of, of EV charging infrastructure. And so that's really had a, a big impact and will continue to have an accelerating impact on where these chargers are placed and how many of them are available at those locations with the goal absolutely of making it as easy as possible for anyone to find charging when they need it, where they need it. Oh, well, absolutely. And, you know, can we talk about that transition from early adopters to maybe a, bo a more broader public? You know, what impact is this going to be having on the industry? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's going to have a, a pretty big impact because, um, people who, let's say, had an EV in the early 2000s, uh, mid 2010s, and and so on, like the people who currently have an EV for several years, are people who jumped on that bandwagon, um, you know, for environmental reasons uh, or for, you know, the technology that was behind it. They, they sort of read up about it, and they were very enthusiastic, and they still are very enthusiastic, and they're especially a lot more forgiving than your standard person who uh, has again the reference of going to the pump, tapping their credit card, fueling up and getting on going in only a matter of a couple of minutes. So obviously, if someone comes into the EV world of the mindset of I'm going to have such a quick, you know, in and out sort of experience, there's a bit of a obviously a learning curve for some people. And uh, again, like our goal, obviously, is to make sure that the deployment of these stations uh, is done in a thoughtful manner, right? So it's one thing to add hundreds of thousands of chargers across North America. It's another thing to do it in the right areas where it's actually useful for people. Um, if you look at the current landscape of where EV stations are set up, some are great. They're really, you know, next to amenities and services and things that actually help people uh, do things that are handy within that 10, 15, 30, 35 minute break if they need to charge their, their vehicle in a DC fast station on a road trip, for example. Uh, but some other locations are not as well thought out and they don't offer exactly what people are, are expecting to see at a, at a charging station or even at a fueling station. So. One thing I want to touch on that's super important that I think the gas station experience is doing really well, that we're aiming to do even better in the short and, and long term, is making sure that the experience of charging an EV, uh, an, an EV is predictable. Right now, unfortunately, that predictability aspect that a gas station offers, so sort of knowing what you can expect if you stop at a gas station, you know, there'll be a, a restaurant nearby or there'll be a you know, a little a corner store or something I can go in and get a snack or a coffee or bathroom or even have something to clean my windshield or even just a garbage can, you know, small things that just make the pit stop a bit more enjoyable are not currently very standard across how uh, stations are deployed. And that's something that we want to make sure that we're doing better 
Well, I, I do uh, think you touched on a really important part there too, which was, you know, we can just deploy hundreds and thousands of chargers across, but across the board, but it really comes down to which one types of chargers are appropriate for that area. Uh, like you said, where is it in terms of uh, gas stations, they have these amenities nearby to them uh, and building that expectation. Well, you know, as a quick follow up, Edmund, you know, you've actually had a substantial and diverse conversations from panels you've been a part of. So following up on that, I wanted to ask you in regards to those experiences, what kind of discussions have you been having with drivers and just what kind of stories and feedback that you've received? Yeah. Um, so I think that's something that's uh, important within our design team is that we speak to a lot of EV drivers on a weekly and monthly basis. Um, we built up a panel of roughly 400 EV drivers, which we talk to regularly. I think right now we speak into over 150 of them uh, in the last uh, couple months. There's no trash can for me to, you know, empty the stuff that I've been eating on my road trip, you know, and, and put it somewhere. Or there's no, you know, place to just sit and have a snack or a coffee or anything nearby. So, again, um, the things that EV drivers want to be able to do um, while they're doing their pit stops, for example, again for 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 fast charging, are not that out there. They're not that complicated. They're pretty straightforward. It's just things that you have to sort of expect people to want to do to kill time. Sure, that's fine. I mean, um, well, you know, the way that we design charging sites is clearly important to offer uh, a more positive charging experience. But, you know, surely the location of chargers also matters. So, Alex, you were saying earlier that EV charging stations can be located pretty much anywhere. Uh, so how do you choose where to put them? What goes into that thought process? Well, as, we, as we've said, I think the key part is around understanding what it is that EV drivers are going to want to do while they're charging. And so we typically look for locations that are placed near where people are traveling already, uh, particularly if we talk about the, um, the so-called in-transit locations along major highways. We want to make sure they're, they're close to those highways, they're within sight so that people can pull off and quickly get to the chargers, understanding where they are. And then very importantly, there needs to be something typically for them to do while they're charging, right? We've said that the, the charging sessions can last upwards of 30, 40, 40, 30, 40 minutes, even up to an hour in cases. Uh, we would want to make sure that there are places where they can go to the bathroom, where they can get a snack, where they can uh, stretch their legs and feel safe doing that. It's really important that charging locations be well lit and clear of uh, you know, dumpsters and debris and all those things that would make people feel uncomfortable. And so we, we work to find those ideal locations and uh, and place those chargers there so that it it doesn't represent a big detour for, for drivers, that it's, it's somewhere that they would be going, almost going anyway. And that's particularly important, as we said, in the, in the kind of transit sites where people want to get in and out as quick as possible. But it also leads to the, the, the level two stations we talked about, where people would want to have access to those at places where they'll be spending two, three, maybe four hours um, going to the mall, for example, or to a movie or to a concert. Um, those places in, in downtown areas where they're going to be parked for a while. And we'd like to give them the opportunity to take that time to, to charge up their vehicle. Um, one thing that we're seeing more and more is the so-called curbside chargers in major cities so that you can basically park like you would at a parking meter uh, and plug your vehicle in and uh, go away, come back and, and have it be ready to go when you when you arrive. Uh, I think that for me, the, the big theme of EV charging and, and where it, it leads us is it's it's kind of multitasking, right? It's, it's something you can do uh, while you're doing other things. And, and that's really one of the pieces that, that makes it different from the, the current gas station uh, approach that we have today. No, that is super important, you know, and uh, what, how many, out of curiosity, how many EV chargers are along Route 66? Do you have a, a map on that? Well, our, so our goal in the long run, of course, is to increase the, the number of chargers available, increase the dots on the map, if you will. And the question often comes up, can we hope to reach the same number of locations as we have gas stations today? And, and the, the short answer is, in the long run, we can probably hope to exceed even those numbers uh, potentially in terms of placing chargers, because it's actually quite a bit easier to place chargers than it is to place gas stations. Um, 
as we as you can probably tell, all that we really need for a charger installation is an electrical connection. Uh, they tend to be quite small in terms of their footprint and, and their in, impact on the local area. We don't have to have big tanks buried in the ground. And so that allows us to be much more flexible in terms of where we can place these out in the world, all around those places where we would like to have that charging available. Um, we talk about the example of, of going camping and um, in the days of your gasoline powered vehicle, you may find yourself out in the woods, maybe you're not close to a gas station, being worried about being able to make it home. Uh, the reality is today we could look at placing chargers out at those campgrounds. As long as there's, there's somewhere to connect the power, we can make that available to people and, and help them feel that much more confident that they can get home to where they want to be without any concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, speaking of uh, of camping and whatnot, you maybe think of uh, another aspect that does come up often when we're talking to drivers who, for example, are, are bringing their boat up north or they're bringing a, an RV or they're just hauling something that's behind their truck or their SUV or whatnot. Um, one of the great things about the ways that these chargers are so compact is that you can basically create a charging site in any disposition you want. So you can set up these stations to really have a, a pull through, right, for people to park with an RV or or it's something that they're they're pulling behind them, um, and you know we with that obviously we try to make sure that these locations are uh, easy to spot, that they feel safe. Um, you know anyone who's stopping, let's say, uh, on a long road trip during a night period, and, you know lighting has to be present. Uh, these areas have to feel safe. Uh, they have to be easy to recognize from a distance. Um, so these are things that we're trying to work around uh, and make it better for obviously any type of EV driver, um, whether that be at the campsite or off the highway. <laughs> And, and one more really important point that, that we take great pride in at Flow is, is to talk about uptime and the reality that it uh, doesn't matter how many chargers we place, if, if they fail, if they don't work when customers arrive to use them, they're not much good. And so it's, it's critically important that chargers be, be well placed, but also be of suitable quality and be rugged enough so that they are in service when customers arrive to do their charging. Absolutely, quality over quantity for sure. An important aspect to consider when looking at where our chargers are, are placed uh, is the variety of environments in which they have to be, they have to be able to perform at their best. And so with, in, within the Flow product line, we, we take great pride in the fact that our, our super rugged chargers work all the way from the heat of California, all the way up the coast to the, the freezing temperatures of Alaska without, without any problem and maintain an industry leading uptime all throughout. All right. Well, you know what, Alex and Edmund, as we start closing up this podcast, you know, um, all of these things we've discussed so far, I want to ask you, you know, how did we gather this data at Flow and make sure that it's accurate? The first advantage that Flow has actually in this, this type of analysis is the fact that we have an existing network of chargers today that are, are widely used and in placed in all kinds of different places. And so we have the, the usage information that we can gather to tell where are EV drivers using those chargers today. And that is one of the first ways we start by looking to see which are the sites that do really well, which are the ones that are used well and, and, trying, and understanding why. And at the same time, looking at those that aren't used all that particularly well and, and trying to understand why. And from that, we can extract a whole host of information about the best places to put chargers. Um, yeah, well, on our side, let's say if I talk about uh, the design team and the research that we're doing, um, we really focus on the qualitative data that we're getting from users that we speak to. Um, obviously, the numbers that we're getting and all the insights that we have from our existing network is a lot more, you know, number driven. It's it's very, uh, let's say, uh, powered by numbers in a sense. Uh, what we're trying to look into is sort of how do people feel uh, at these sites and how do they what are their desires? What do they What do they hate? What do they want? Uh, these things that they're looking for, and we make sure that we spend a lot of time talking to them. Someone sometimes up to an hour uh, per conversation, just you know, talking about subjects such as you know, how's your DC charging experience right now? What are you looking for? What do you think is missing? Um, and again, talking to over 150 of these drivers from a panel of 400 plus users. Uh, we're not done talking to them and we're still going to keep on gathering insights. And again, anyone who's open to uh, or, or anyone who's looking to install chargers in the near future, uh, we'd be more than happy to share some of that knowledge with them. Sure. And so how can people reach out? Do you have any existing or new panels coming up? 
Uh, well, right now, actually, we're, we're still recruiting. Um, anyone who's interested in, in joining our EV driver panel, um, whether they have an EV now or even if they're looking to get an EV, honestly, anyone can, can reach out to us. Uh, we'll provide a link, uh, but essentially going through that little form will automatically add you uh, to our EV driver panel. And uh, full disclosure, these are, these are paid uh, interviews, right? You get paid to spend time talking about a, a fun subject, EV driving. So um, if anyone's interested, uh, we'll provide a link. All right. Well, that wraps up the conversation for today. So a big thank you to Alex and Edmund for joining us on today's podcast to discuss the status of EV charging today. Uh, EV charging is becoming increasingly more convenient, as we talked about. And, you know, companies like Flow, they work really hard uh, to get an even higher number of just not just chargers, but reliable chargers on the map. So in response to the prompt that ideated this whole podcast, EV charging stations ever be as good as gas stations? Well, I guess we'll probably just have to wait a few years to wait and see. But at this rate, I think in a few years, we will uh, won't even have to ask this question, right? Uh, so thank you, Alex and Edmund for being on the podcast. Thanks, Gabrielle. Thank you. Of course. And as always, if you want to learn more, please visit flow.com and look for this podcast wherever it is you get your podcasts at. Thanks for tuning in.